Today we're going to be looking at three puzzles, collectively called Rooting for NASA. All of them are going to be taking increasing line segments. So we're going to start off with the very smallest line segment that you can draw on a grid and moving up to infinity. We, we won't get there probably, but we're going to start at the smallest one. So this one is called Starburst. We're going to start off by taking that smallest line segment, the one, and we're going to be adding it to the star. Then we're going to be taking the second smallest, the root two, adding it on either side. We're going to make everything nice and symmetric. Mirror symmetry is going to be in vogue in these starbursts. Next, the root four. Uh, how are we going to add that? We're going to keep mirror symmetry and we're going to add one on either side. How are we going to add the root five? Well, you might think that you add it like this, but we're trying to move, we're trying to fit in as many as you can here. So you have to um, move down the smallest angle possible each time. And we can move down a smaller angle with this root five. We can actually do this to get the root five segment. So we're going to do that. Next, we're going to go with the root eight and finally the root nine or three. This starburst is complete. How many segments have we used? Um, in total, we've used 10 segments. It's time for the next, uh, for the next starburst. There we go. So we, we set aside all of those ones. Now we're starting at the root 10. Okay, let's put the root 10 in. Again, we're being symmetric. Your turn to think. Where does this next one go? So this is going to be the root 13 distance. Can you imagine where it's going to go? Did you choose here? No, it's wrong because you can choose a smaller angle. You, you can go down a smaller amount. That's the correct result. So these, I think, are just stunningly beautiful, these starbursts. Uh, uh, the questions that you guys should be asking as mathematicians are, I wonder what numbers can I get in the middle of that star? What's the lowest number that I can get? What's the highest number that I can get? Now, I don't know the answers to these questions, which is why I'm interested in these puzzles. So now I'm going to take you on a wild ride. Uh, I do all my calculations by hand, and you'll see later on that I make some mistakes. But in this case, I don't think I have. I might be wrong, but these are the first set of starbursts. Uh, we go. We went up to 20. I think 20 might actually be the highest. I don't know. Um, then we go down to 11, then to 13, to 16, 10, and then this wonky 17. Okay, so that was Starburst. Next, let's look at falling into a black hole. Now, those of you who are familiar with, with uh, Math Pickle might remember this one because uh, this time we're going to be looking at a spiral. And I've previously called this the Babylonian spiral. But again, I'm taking consecutive uh, um, segments and adding them in, and I'm spiraling out. So here I go, spiraling away. And each time I have to move the smallest amount. So I, I, and it has to be curving in a clockwise fashion. So this red, no, I can't curve suddenly in a counterclockwise way. I have to do it in a clockwise way. So that is illegal. That's the only correct way to place that length three segment. Now, I want you guys to imagine how I would add the length root 10 segment. Yes, you might think I could add it like this, but that's turning too much. I want to turn as little as I can adding each segment. So the correct answer is that. That's root 10, root 13, root 16 or 4, and I keep on going. So what are some of the fun questions that you can ask about this spiral? Well, first of all, does this spiral keep on going in kind of this beautiful way, or does it crash into itself? Does it, like, what happens to it? Uh, another thing you can ask is, these distances, do these distances, these are the square of the distances to each of these points. So for example, that is root five to there, root 13, root 26, and so on, all the way out. So 
some questions for falling into a black hole. Lastly, and this is where I'm going to make some mistakes, uh, I have this definition of a rock. So you take the first few uh, segments and you try to make them into a polygon. And here you can see that I failed, so that, that's fine. Uh, maybe I need another line segment. Have I successfully completed? Yes. So this is a successful rock. This is our first rock. No mistakes so far. What about the next set of line segments? Can they make a rock? Well, I can't make a rock like this, but maybe I chose too many line segments. Maybe I should just choose the first five. And indeed, I can, ch I can solve this for five. My mistake was, is I can also solve it for four. <laughs> so I want to try to make these rocks using as few as possible. So I should have chosen four. I messed up. So the five one is an error. And after that, then everything's thrown off, of course. So the next one, I'm starting with the wrong vector. And I found this. And then this one was the next one that I discovered. And then this one was the next one that I discovered. But of course, all of those are predicated on the mess up that I made with that, with that first one. So these are uh, all of these results for the rocks are, are wrong. I don't mind admitting my errors. So you guys get to share in my errors. And there you go. There's my error of the day. <laughs> Good. Well, I hope you enjoyed those uh, three puzzles rooting for NASA. And uh, please join me for more puzzles on mathpickle.com or go to Julia Robinson Math Festival. You can find their website, jrmf.org. So till next time, take care. Bye-bye.